Hi everyone, welcome to Glow with Grace. Happy Valentine's Day, happy love day. So I wanted to answer some more of your questions today. And the first one is, do we give eggs to our daughter Araya or would we? Um, no, we don't. And it's not our intention to give her eggs. Um, we are raw vegans and we're raising her that way. And it's our intention to keep doing that. Um, and we'll see what happens. She's absolutely thriving so far. Um, you know, she's really healthy, she's really active, intelligent, so we don't have any concerns that she's not getting what she requires. And as I talked about in my last video on questions and answers, um, there's different supplements that I take to, and she still primarily breastfeeds. I would say that um, probably like about 70% of her intake is still breast milk at this point and she is 14 months old. She'll be 15 months in about a week. So yeah, she seems to be doing totally fine without um, eggs or any other animal products. Um, and I know that that is a concern often for people who are raising raw or vegan or raw vegan children, especially um, to make sure that they're covering all bases and other children getting everything they require. It's a really important point. And as I've said many times, um, the book Evie's Kitchen by Shazzy is just the most amazing resource for understanding that whole picture and making sure that your children are getting everything that their bodies require. So that's what we used and it feels like everything's going great. Um, what else? Somebody asked, how long were we trying to conceive and did we do charting? Um, Araya was conceived on our third cycle of trying to conceive, so three months it took to conceive for her to decide to appear. Um, I hear that the average is five months for couples who are trying to conceive. Um, we did not do any charting, <laughs> no. Um, I had, for the last kind of few years prior to conceiving, become increasingly aware of my cycle um, in terms of you know knowing when it starts and when it finishes and which days I seem to be like in the middle of the cycle the most fertile that, that kind of stuff um, but I didn't chart anything you know I just um, was aware of that um, yeah and three months and it really amazes me to think of all the children who come here um, through kind of like unwanted pregnancies you know it's amazing like to consider the contrast between babies who show up that way and then people who are trying for you know months and years to conceive um i think it's really fascinating um so yeah we were really blessed that after three months we conceived and as i've said before i would prefer for Araya to be at least three years old before we think about bringing any more in. Um, I don't know if we even will. So, let's see. What else? Um, oh, somebody asked, why can't enemas or common hydrotherapy heal my vision? Like me, my vision. Um, maybe they can, you know? I believe anything's possible. Um, it happens that at this point in my life, in my belief system, that isn't something that I have loaded in there, that enemas or common hydrotherapy would heal my vision. Um, I believe that there's a really strong emotional, mental component behind all physical conditions and vision issues especially. Um, and for myself, my vision issues began at the same time that my thyroid and weight issues began when I was like about 11 years old um, and I see it very much as part of the picture of me kind of shutting down my connection to the outside world um, and in my case you know my vision um, I'm short-sighted and my my eyes are actually not round anymore they're like rugby football shaped or American football shaped or whatever you want to think of it as. Um, so the idea of current hydrotherapy 
helping my eyes to change back just doesn't quite fit for me, <laughs> you know? It feels almost kind of like, you know, someone's arm getting cut off or something and thinking that colon hydrotherapy is gonna help it to grow back. Um, as I said, anything's possible, you know, I really believe anything's possible, but that's just not in my belief system right now. <laughs> I think, you know, if you put your intention and your energy towards anything, it's possible. Um, there's a lot of amazing kind of natural eye healing um, exercises and books and products and stuff out there that I have access to different points in my life. Um, I'm just not really focused on that at this point. Um, I am stepping down my my glasses prescription gradually over time. I've probably been through three or four different prescription downs um, over the last few years. So, you know, that's something that I'm doing. Um, yeah, I just wouldn't really recommend it <laughs> to someone as the path for healing their vision to be doing current hydrotherapy. I mean, for everything and anything possibly. Um, yeah, I just think there's other ways that you could probably help your vision. Um, why do I use soy lecithin powder instead of sunflower lecithin? Um, the only sunflower lecithin that I've personally ever come across was a liquid that was like really thick, kind of almost like molasses, and I just don't find it as easy to use as the powder. That's the simple reason. So we use the non-GMO soy lecithin powder from Health Force Nutritionals, and you know it's great for making sure you're getting um, choline for babies' developing brain and stuff. Um, and when I started to use lecithin, I was often like sprinkling it over stuff, like over salad or wraps or whatever. So um, it just seemed a lot easier for me to use the soy lecithin powder than the sunflower kind of molasses like stuff. So that's it. That's my reason. Do you wear makeup? And if so, which brand would you recommend? No, I don't wear makeup and I have no idea what to recommend <laughs> in terms of brands. Um, those of you who know something about my background will know that I was really into makeup for a while there when I was in that kind of morbidly obese body and I couldn't really wear the kind of clothes that I wanted to wear and I, I just didn't really feel like I could express myself um, through my appearance in the way that I wanted to. I wore so much makeup. I mean, I would just be like, caked in makeup and blue lipstick and you know big green eyes and all kinds of and nail varnish nail polish like all the time I used to paint um the British flag the Union Jack I used to paint that on my nails and just crazy stuff I was really really into it um and then pretty much when I stepped onto my raw food path um I dropped all of that kind of stuff so yeah I'm just I don't use makeup, I'm not into it, um, I don't know what to recommend. If it was me and I was looking for something, I would probably go to have a look and see what Nadine has at Living Libations. She probably has something, you know, she probably has like some lipstick or eyeshadow or something. Um, yeah, that's it. Oh, you can use natural stuff, of course, you can use like beetroot to make like you have some blush on or some lipstick or something. What else? Um, what kind of laundry detergent do we use? At this point, what we're using is something that we can buy here in Ecuador that says that it's biodegradable on the packaging. What we always used to use was the soap nuts. Um, so, And that's what I would use if we had like easy access to it. Um, and ironically, they do actually grow here. So in that sense, we have like totally easy access to it because they're like falling off the trees here. But for some reason, the ones that grow here, we haven't quite worked out yet how to use them um, to get them to actually really work. The ones that you can buy like in the US and different places are excellent. That's what we always used to use, um, either the actual soap nuts or the liquid that's produced from the soap nuts. But here, somehow not quite yet. So hopefully that's something that will come um, if someone does an experiment with making the liquid out of them or something. 
Um, someone was asking uh, about having bowel movements after doing colon hydrotherapy. Like, uh, they were scared they had done a colonic and they didn't have a bowel movement the next day or something or whatever it was. Um, this is something that people are often concerned about. It can take two, three days sometimes for some people for the body to catch up to be at the point where there's stuff to release again. It's totally understandable, it's totally standard, you know, it's not something to be concerned about. Especially if you've just done a colonic rather than an enema, you know, you've just cleared out that whole area and your body's just refilling, you know, the nature abhors a vacuum and so the, the body will for sure fill that back up again. <laughs> it just might take some time and it's it's totally fine. It's nothing to be concerned about. It might take two or three days and then you'll be back into the usual cycle. Um, someone was asking, do we have an outdoor bedroom and do we have heated tiles here in our house? So yes, we do have an outdoor bedroom. It is true. Um, this is actually it <laughs> here in the background. Um, it's a pretty amazing structure. Um, it's basically all screen like the walls are all screen like you can see here and the glass the, the roof is glass so it's screen walls glass roof and it's round and it's tiled on the floor not heated tiles and then we just have mattresses on the floor and that's where we sleep and so it's just like completely pure airflow all night you know the whole thing is just screen and uh, we can see the stars and the moon and you know we're very we feel very connected to the the cycles that are going on up there in the sky uh, and it's so beautiful when it rains um you know just to be out there this like beautiful sound on the roof um there's a big overhang we really really appreciate really good air quality it's one of the major reasons why we're even here um, in Vilcabamba, in Ecuador, in the Andes. Amazing air quality and, you know, we just always want that wherever we are. But there's really good air quality, especially when we're sleeping. Um, to us, it's like complete insanity that people sleep in rooms with the windows closed. Like, just disgusting insanity. <laughs> um, you know, no fresh air. When we used to travel almost all the time, especially traveling around North America giving talks, um, if we were in a hotel room where we couldn't open the windows, we would literally sleep with the door open, um, like on the chain, you know, um, <laughs> just to have the airflow because it was impossible for us to be somewhere where there wasn't airflow. So, um, you know, the, the temperature here, the climate here is pretty much always the same. So we just you know, there's such a blessing of being here. We don't have, you know, extreme like season temperature changes or anything. So we just pretty much sleep outside and we absolutely love it. Um, and that's all Araya's ever known, you know, I'm really curious what, <laughs> what it's gonna be like for her if she ever travels somewhere else and is in, you know, a little room with a little window and stuff. Um, and no, no heated tiles here. Um, Again, because the temperature is pretty much always the same, the climate is pretty much always, always the same. People don't have, you know, air conditioning or fires or heaters or anything like that. You know, it's it's just, it's like Groundhog Day. <laughs> it's like the same weather all the time because we're just so near the equator. Um, the sun comes up and goes down pretty much the same time every single day. It's around... 5.30 in the morning, 6, the sun comes up, and around 6.37 it goes down, something like that. So yeah, it's pretty much always the same weather, same climate, everything here, and we really appreciate it and we feel really blessed, really grateful. So I'm going to leave it there, that was a lot already, um, there's still more questions and I'm sure there'll be more to come. So I'll come back at some point, answer some more questions, thank you for now, for everything, and ciao!